Let's assume that you are building containerized image to share with other teammates or with the open source community. So it's very common to have a custom application configuration unique to each organization or each environment. So how do you make this containerized app portable? Hello and welcome to Config Maps. My name is Srinath Challa. I'm a certified Kubernetes administrator. So in the next few minutes, I'll try my best to explain what is Config Map, how they are created, and how to use them. So before you watch this video, it is required to have a basic understanding of pods and kubectl. In case if you need a help with that, please do check the links in the description below. So without any further delay, let's take a look at the things you will be learning as part of this video. This presentation is divided into two parts. In part one, we'll discuss the concept around config maps. First, before we actually discuss about config maps, we'll discuss about how configuration is managed for containerized apps. Then, we'll discuss about the overview of config maps. And finally, we'll discuss how the config maps are created. So that's about the part one. And now coming to the part two, we'll review the demo we are about to perform on live Kubernetes cluster in advance. So this will help you better understand when you watch actually doing it live. So in this review demo, I'll show you how you can create config maps using directories, then files, and then literal values. If you are looking for actual demo on performing above steps on live Kubernetes cluster, then refer to the link in the description below. And now let's get started with how configuration is managed for containerized apps. So generally, when you build any container image, we need to make sure the image is portable and shared with others using common platforms such as Docker Hub or your private registries. And as and when needed, these images will be downloaded from these registries and launched within your own environment. So one important question you may have is, how can you make these containers portable? That's possible using separating container image from its custom configuration. This custom configuration is different from company to company. So we apply this custom configuration at the time of starting container. So how do we apply this configuration to the container? Typically, three ways. One, from configuration files. We can copy the configuration files into the container target location, maybe etcd directory on Linux. And also, we can pass them as a command line or as an environment variable. These configuration formats can be INI or XML or JSON or any custom formats that application containers can able to read and understand. So the question is how this configuration is handled inside the pods in Kubernetes. And we'll see that in next slide. Using config maps. So what is this config map? Config map is a Kubernetes object which allows you to separate your configuration from your pods and components. As a result, it keeps your containers portable and makes the configuration easier to change and manage and prevents the hard coding configuration data into pod spec. So config map stores the configuration data as a key value pair. For example, if you are passing any configuration in files, then the name of the file is going to be the key and content of that file is going to be the value. You can also pass key value page straight from the command line or as an environment variable. So with the help of config maps in Kubernetes, you can manage configuration of containers. But if there are any sensitive data as part of this configuration, then you need to use another type of object, which is called as secrets. The major difference between the secrets and the config maps are Secrets are meant to handle sensitive data and whereas config maps are designed to handle overall configuration of a container. You still can manage the sensitive data using config maps, but it will keep your application at risk from all the malicious attacks. So that's about the difference between config maps and secrets. And we're going to look at the secrets in next video. And one more thing, you must create the config map before referencing it into the pod spec. In case if you reference a config map inside the pod spec that doesn't exist, 
then pod won't start. Also, if you reference keys inside a pod that doesn't exist in the config map, then it will prevent the pod from starting. So before you reference the config map and keys inside the pod spec, please do make sure they are created and exist. So that's about the config map. Next, let's take a look at the syntax of config map in next slide. So to create the config maps, we use kubectl create config command from directories, files or literal values. If you observe this syntax, we use the standard kubectl create command to create the config map object, then it follows the config map name. And finally, the data source. This data source can be directory, file or a literal value. In case if you are using data source as a file or a list of files inside the directory, then you use from file option and followed by file or directory name. In case if you are using just the key value pair, then you use from literal option. And once you create the config map, you can use the kubectl described or kubectl get to display the information about config map. So that's about the config map and how you can create it using a command. So now it's time to move on to the next section and which is review demo. In this review demo, we'll create the config maps using different data sources such as directories, files and literals. So this section is divided into three parts accordingly. First, let's create the config map using data inside multiple files from your directory. In next three slides, we'll download two config files inside a directory. Then we create the config maps using files inside the directory. And finally, we will validate to make sure it is created as per our requirements. First, let's start downloading those two config files. First, let's go ahead and create the directory where we store these files. Then we'll copy those two files into the directory using duplicate command. As you can see, we have successfully downloaded those two files into our directory. Now let's get these two files to display the contents of that file. From the output, you can see all these files has a key value paid data. And now let's create the config maps by combining these two files inside the directory. So to create the config map, we use the kubectl create config map command. The name of this config map is game config. Since all the files are inside the directory, so we use the from file option followed by the directory path. From the output, it is confirmed that config map is successfully created. Now to display the config maps, we use the kubectl get command. Next, to see the configuration that we passed into the config map, we'll need to print the output of config maps into YAML formats. We'll see that about that in next slide. Here it is. That's exactly the data that we passed into the config map. The game.properties and ui.properties are files in our target directory are represented in the data section of the config map. So that's how we create the config map using multiple files combined inside the directory. Next, moving on to files. In next two slides, we'll look at the creating of config map using single file. First, we'll download the sample file from online. Then we'll create the config map using that file. After that, we'll create the pod spec using that config map. And finally, we'll verify the configuration was correctly applied or not. And let's go ahead and do that. Let's take a real world example of how to configure Redis using config map. So first let's go ahead and download the sample Redis config data file. Once that is done, let's do a cat on that file to display the contents of that file. As you can see, it has two entries of max memory. Now let's create a config map called example Redis config from Redis config file that we just downloaded. From the output, it is confirmed that config map is successfully created. In case if you want to display the config map, you can use the kubectl get or kubectl describe command. Next step is to make use of above config map inside a pod spec. We'll do that in next slide. Since this is a standard pod spec, I'm guessing most of us, you are all familiar with it. So I'm directly jumping into how and where do you place this config map inside the pod. So there are two different ways. One by using volumes, other by using environment variables. 
In this example, we will mod the config map using volumes. So here is a volume section. First, name of the volume is config. Next, type of the volume in this case is config map. So under config map, we will give the name of the config map, which is example redis config that we just created in the previous slide. And this config map contains two items, which is a key and the path. Here, key is nothing but a file name we used when we are creating the volume, which is redis config. Path is a target location where data will be present inside the pod. Here, we are using redis.conf as a path file name. One final thing to add to this spec file is, where do this volume gets mounted on? Under volume mounts. Here is a volume mount section. It contains the mount path where the volume is mounted on and the name of the volume, which is config. That is it. Now, you can create this deployment using kubectl create command. In next slide, we'll verify to make sure the data is present in that location where we wanted it. So to verify, let's cat the target file inside the pod. You can do that using kubectl exact command. Here is a command for it. If you look into that command, redis is a pod name that we just created, redis master is a mount point, and redis.conf is the path. All these are mentioned in the pod spec file in the previous slide. So once you run this command, you can see the same contents of the file here. Also, let's verify that redis configuration was correctly applied or not. You can do that by using redis cli. Yes, it is correctly applied based on the output. So that's how you can deploy the configuration files into the pods, containers, and set of containers. So far, we have seen creating config maps using one file and multiple files. And there is one more thing left. And that is creating config maps, taking inputs from literal values straight away from the command line. Let's see how it is done. Here in the next two slides, we are going to create config map using literal values. Once you have the config map in place, then we can create the pod spec with the config map. And finally, we will verify the data. Now, let's get started creating the config map from literal values, which I mean key value pair straight from the command line. So to create the config maps, we use kubectl create config map command and let's see the complete command of it. As you can see, it is started with kubectl create config map, then followed by the config map name and finally the data. We are using the from literal value because we are passing the key value data pair straight from the command line. Just to clarify here, key is the special dot how and the value is very. So when we reference this config map inside the pod, we will use the key, not the value. As we discussed earlier, there are two different ways that we can reference config maps inside pod. One by using volumes, another by using environment variables. Since we already saw using config maps as volumes previously, now we'll be using as environment variables in this example. This is a standard pod spec with busybox container. Also, we can see there is a command which will print environment variables once the pod is started. So this pod will print environment variables and then just goes off and it will never restart. As this is a standard pod spec, let's focus on how we use config map inside a pod. So here is the environment section, what makes this pod spec stand out. First, we'll define the name of the environment variables inside the pod, which is special level key. And now the question is, where do we get the value of this environment variable? From config map. First, we define the name of the config map, which we just created, which is special config then followed by the key, which is special dot how. That's it. Now, to create this pod spec, we'll be using the kubectl create command. Since you already saw that command hundreds of times, so I did not mention that here. Once a pod gets successfully created, then it prints the environment variable and just goes off immediately. So to validate this, we can use the kubectl logs command. And here it is. As you can see the environment variable special underscore level underscore key 
is configured with a value as very. That's exactly the same key value page that we passed into special config config map. So this is how we can configure the environment variable inside the pods using literal values. So far we have seen how to create the config maps using multiple files inside a directory, then a single file and finally a literal value. So before we move on to the next topic in this video, we will go through the summary of what we discussed in the last few minutes in this video. So coming to the summary, in first section we discussed the concept around config maps. First we discussed about how custom configuration is managed separately from container images to make it portable. We also discussed about different ways that we can inject configuration data into container when it is started. Then we discussed what are config maps in Kubernetes. It is a Kubernetes object which helps us to handle configurations of a container. Config maps are ideal solutions to handle non-sensitive configuration data. Finally, we discussed about how config maps are created using kubectl create command. After that, in next part 2, we review the demo we are able to perform on live cluster. In this review demo, we created the config maps using multiple files inside a directory, then using a single file and finally using a literal values from a command line. And now coming up next, actual demo of config maps. In the demo, we will perform the exact steps that we just discussed in the review demo section. Link to that video is provided in the description below. And finally, thank you so much for watching this and hope to see you in the next video.